Well, it's coffee time again, and I have a new coffee kit I want to share with you. It's all made of titanium, and it was sent to me by the company Silver Ant Outdoors. If you're interested in seeing what I have, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank the company Silver Ant Outdoors for sending me these products so that I could share them with you. Now, the quick backstory is, is I was in conversation with the company representative, Sean, from Silver Ant Outdoors, and Sean recommended that I take a look at their website, go through their catalog of items, and pick a few out and send them by email to him. So I did, and I was impressed with the range of products that they have. Everything they make is titanium. That is is what they specialize in. A lot of it are pots, pans, mugs, water bottles, and kettles. And it was the kettles that drew my attention. Kettles that I had not seen anywhere else. So I made up a short wish list. I sent it back to Sean and he said, great choices. We're sending them all. I was impressed. He actually sent everything on my list. Now it's not a big list as you'll see. So it makes up a complete coffee kit, all these items together. So Okay, what goes together in a titanium coffee kit? Well, to start with, you have to have something to carry your water in. So it started with this water bottle. This is an 800 milliliter water bottle. Now, what I think I'll do is I'm gonna forego all the specifications just to save a little bit of time. But of course, I'll put all of that in the video description if you are interested. But I can tell you that it's just over five ounces empty, but it holds um, 800 milliliters full. Let me just take the lid off. There is a silicone seal around the top here, and as far as I can tell, it's not coming in contact with the water because it's only touching the rolled rim on top. And of course, that means nothing to affect the quality of the water, and it does have a stand-up D-ring. It did also come with this neoprene, neoprene sleeve that I just took off so that I could demonstrate it, but those two items come together. Okay, you've got a way to cover your water. Now you gotta have a way to boil water. And this is what started my interest in their products. And this is one of their kettles. This is what's known as a short spout pour over kettle. And I'll explain why it's called a short, well, it's obvious, but they're in different, difference to some of their long spout models. So as you can see, it is a little different looking from most of the kettles you're gonna see available on the market. It is 800 milliliters, so just short of a full liter when full. The handle is made of titanium wire. Now the handle is removable, but I'll come back to it in a minute because I don't recommend removing it. Lid on top has little detents around the outside to kind of hold it on. And as you can see, it doesn't have the usual stand-up D-ring that often the small pots of this uh, nature have that are often hard to get the D-ring to stand up to lift the lid. So this is always standing, makes it much easier, of course. So this pot, or this kettle, as I mentioned, is known as a short spout pour over kettle because they also have the long gooseneck kettles on their website and a few other designs as well. And they're designed specifically for making coffee in pour over devices. Well, I didn't think the long gooseneck would go well out in the woods, so that's why I opted for the short spout. Now, I did say I'd mention the uh, handle. So it does have a knurled thumb screw here, which can also be used with a flathead screw, maybe even a coin to take on and off. So you can take it on and off, but I don't recommend you do. And the reason is it's a three piece assembly, the piece that mounts to the body of the kettle, the wire handle itself, and the screw, they'll come apart. So if the screw had been somehow attached to the wire handle so that it wouldn't come off some type of a locking washer to hold it on, then I'd say, sure, just use your multi-tool, take it off, pack it away, because that's probably the one con I find for this kettle is that, well, the handle. Look at the size of it. It's, it's not that it's big, and it's just that it kind of makes it a little awkward to pack. So if I could take it off, it'd be nicer. Folding butterfly handles would be great. But you know, I find that this works very well, and as long as you keep it out of the flame, it actually is very comfortable to hold on to. It stays cool because of its wire makeup. So that's my means of boiling my water for my coffee or heating my water for a coffee. Now, how are we actually going to make the coffee? Well, this is the filter. Now, it came with the kettle, it is part of the set, and I guess you could consider it a pour over filter, but in reality, it's what's known as an immersion filter. So let me see if I can give you some close-ups. Let's hope that by blocking my face, you can see. 
perforated, tiny, tiny, very tiny holes all up and down the side and across the bottom. I can see it much better when I'm looking through it into the sunlight, but those holes are small enough that it captures almost all of the fines or the very, very fine grinds and silt that would, would make it into your coffee otherwise. I say almost, but there is the ever so slight chance of some of it getting through because it's not a cloth filter, right? So you're always going to expect some through. But I'll tell you, if you're used to making coffee with a French press, this leaves less behind in your coffee than a French press will. So it's pretty good like that. There are two ways I've discovered that for using this, and I'll, I'll demonstrate both of them. Nice little stand-up bale on top. Now, yes, it doesn't have to be used for coffee. It could be used for loose leaf tea if that's your thing. But it does, it sits nicely inside of the kettle with the lid on. So you can transport them together like that. All right, so now I have a way of making my coffee. I have to have something to drink my coffee out of. Where's the other piece of it? Here it is. Okay, so I looked on their website, and one of the things that it draw my attention was this double wall coffee mug. And uh, so this is what I requested. Now, it's a double wall coffee mug. It has a plastic lid on, which is very tight with the silicone seal. By the way, it is, in fact, very waterproof. I tested it out, turning it upside down and shaking it. As long, of course, as the sippy lid is uh, closed over, it has its own seal as well. And there's another feature on this, and that is a hole in the center that has its own plug. And the reason for that is, is not only is this for holding hot beverages in, but it came with this titanium straw, which would drop down in the center, and now you can enjoy some cold beverage and have them stay cold in the hotter weather as well. So it's nice to have those options. I do like my cold brew coffee, so I may use it that way, but more than likely most of the time I am going to use it as a coffee mug. This is a 400 mil, that's 14 ounces. That's a good size coffee mug. It was actually a little bigger than uh, the pitcher suggested, at least to me. And uh, maybe I should have known that, but of course it's a double wall mug, so it's gonna be a little bit bigger than you would normally think 400 milliliters was. But uh, it's great, it works very, very well, as you'll see in a minute's time. One last component of my coffee kit. So I have a way to carry water, I have a way to heat that water, I have a way of filtering my coffee, and, and then I have a mug to drink it from. But I also have something to carry my coffee in. Small titanium container. This is quite nice, in fact, very, very light. Just over an ounce, as you'll see in the video description. And I've been carrying it for some time, and uh, can you guess what I have inside? Yes, of course, I have Rampage Coffee inside, because that's still my go-to coffee. And uh, you could put loose leaf tea in it, but of course, I'm a coffee guy, so I have my coffee inside with my little scoop. And as you'll see, I gr that smells nice, right? <laughs> that was nice. Now, it is not airtight so it's not waterproof there is no silicone seal or anything on the inside of this so it's intended for dry goods such as coffee tea i suppose you could put other things in them as well but just a nice size now one thing i didn't show is that of course you'd like to keep your kit as small as possible so you could transport this inside of the coffee cup and it's snug it stacks in there nicely but it does also stack inside of the coffee filter so it's you can snug it away i'd probably leave it inside of the coffee filter that just seems to make a bit more sense if i was choosing to take that coffee filter with me last thing i want to show you is each of these items come with nice little nylon stuff sacks and this is the larger one would be for the kettle. Actually, I can get the whole, everything down inside of this bag to kind of hold it all together. One more thing to share with you, and that is their logo. So there is the Silver Ant Outdoors logo. And by the way, I am going to be putting a link to their website. And if you use the link, you'll get the link that I put in the, in the video description, you will receive a 10% off if you're interested in that as well. In fact, I would recommend you take a look at it just because they are different than a lot of what you see elsewhere. Now, you're going to see things that you see maybe on AliExpress or Amazon, and you say, I think I've seen that under another brand name. That's true. These are made in China. Uh, but the factory is owned by the company, and the company is, in fact, multinational. The, co the factory itself is registered 
as a Chinese company, but the owners are in the UK and in the Middle East as well as in China. So they have absolutely control. This is their factory. They have absolute control over the quality of the products that are coming out, which is a nice reassurance as well. Okay, I've talked all about these components. There's only one thing left to do, and that is let's make some coffee. Okay, so my water is, yeah, it has come to a boil. Just let it go there for a second while I prepare my coffee. So as I mentioned, I ground this coffee this morning and I ground it a little bit coarse. Like French press coarse is probably the best way to describe it. I'm putting three scoops, three tablespoons of coffee in. Yes, French press coarse and that minimizes the amount of fines or little tiny particles of coffee that do make it through the filter and as you'll see very very little at all. Okay so there's two things or two ways that I could use this filter for making coffee. One if I wanted to make a full pot of coffee I could put in the amount of coffee compared to the amount of water and drop this down inside of the pot and just let it steep there or in this case I can put it inside my mug. Now it doesn't go all the way to the bottom which is just fine find a nice level spot for it here. See how hot this is. Good, nice and cool, good. And all I need to do now is pour in my hot water. Give it a second because you know some of it is going to settle down through and you want it to equalize across inside of the pot. Maybe a tiny touch more. That should do it. Put the kettle aside. Now, here's the thing. You're going to leave this, like a French press, three, four minutes. Uh, if you want to go a little shorter, it's not going to hurt. It'll, you're, if you go a little longer, it's just going to make your coffee a little stronger. Now, one of the things I have do sometimes is kind of give it a little shake just to make all the, sure all the coffee is uh, mixed in with the water as it sits. And it did settle down. I think I will put a tiny touch more water in. It's the judgment part of how high, because once it soaks through the coffee and levels off, you want to see where that is. Yeah, so just leave it sit for, I don't know, two, three, four minutes before you take it out. So I think what I'll do is I'll just cut for two minutes, let this steep a little bit. Actually, I'm going to let the camera roll, but I'll cut out two minutes of time that you're sitting here watching me do exactly this. And uh, then we'll take the filter out. All right, I judge about four minutes have passed and uh, I think my coffee is plenty strong. So now here's the thing about removing this type of an immersion basket filter. When you lift it up, lift slowly so the water can move down through the filter and the coffee. And what you'll find is that it'll take a second to finish draining off in fact, I find sometimes it actually helps to rotate it a little bit. All right, that's all there is to it. Okay, now I can set the basket aside. Now, this is fresh, hot coffee. Smells great, but it's a bit too hot for me to drink. So I think what I'll do is, no, I think I'll leave the lid off because I don't want to keep it too hot. I want it to cool down just a tiny bit so that we can do a taste test as we wrap this video up. Yeah, okay. Nice cup of coffee. Let it sit just long enough to get to the right drinking temperature. It's a beautiful day here, but it's still cold. It's still minus three degrees, even though it's early spring, and it's still very windy. So uh, having a cup of coffee on a day like this, that's really a nice treat to have. And the nice thing about being able to make my coffee directly in this double wall mug is that it doesn't cool off. You know, it's not like uh, I have to worry, get to the coffee quickly because it's going to cool off because of course it is titanium, it's going to conduct the heat, it's going to cool off. No, that's not the case. Double wall mug like this will keep your hot coffee hot for I don't know, hours really. Uh, I don't know how long because I've never let it sit that long to see, but it'll keep your coffee hot. And the nice, other nice thing is ever so slightly warm to the touch, but not hot. Not like if it was a single wall mud. You know, having a double walled mug not only keeps your coffee hot, but keeps the outside cool so you can grab it. And if it was cold out, put the lid on, 
and I'm good to go. It'll stay warmer that much longer. Okay, a few closing thoughts on the Silver Ant Outdoor Titanium. My, mine is a coffee kit, but there's, like I mentioned, a wide range of items that I would recommend you take a look at. Unique things, things that you do see elsewhere, things that you don't see elsewhere, and that's what's really interesting about it. And the other thing I noticed is the prices are not just comparable to other places, but in a lot of cases less expensive. If you add in that extra 10%, if you see an item that you've been wanting and the price hits you right, you know, then why not? It's, uh, it's worth taking a look at. The quality of these items is on par with anything else that I have ever tested. So no question about that. And that's one of the things about titanium, I think doesn't get talked about very much. We often talk about its lightweight. We talk about its strength. We talk about it heating up and cooling down. Uh, yeah, those are all great qualities of titanium. But when it comes to food, titanium is a good material because it's non-reactive. It will not take on flavors. It will not give off flavors. You won't rust, it won't corrode. You can't harm it that way. It'll always give you a quality cup of coffee in this case or whatever it is you're cooking and you can have the confidence of knowing that it is safe that way as well. So that's another good feature of, of uh, titanium. Again, not often talked about. Okay, that's enough. Uh, if you have any questions about the Silver Ant Outdoors products, if you have any comments, please put them both in the comments section below. Again, all the specifications for each of the products I showed you, I'll be putting in the video description as well as that link to their website where you can get 10% off if you are interested in doing that. Okay, until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.